Hey everyone, when you're sponsoring a singles event, do you wind up with lopsided results? It seems a lot of people do. I know we've talked about this before, but people are still having trouble with it, so it's time for a ref refresher. It doesn't matter what kind of singles event you're holding. Let's say it's a speed dating event, that's something common. Done the usual way, at the end of the event, you're seeing the men interested in 80% of the women, but those same women are only interested in 20% of the men. It's that darn 80-20 rule again. You can never escape it. What are you gonna do? Fix up 20% of the people? That's a failure. Use the men's answer and set up women with someone they are turned down? No, that's no good either. Somehow, we've gotta get the women interested in more of the men, or at least get the men to be more picky. But how? The solution is actually incredibly easy. In a typical speed dating scenario, the men move from table to table to meet each woman. Flip that on its head. Make the women get up and move to the next man. No, really, it's that simple. Making that one little change plays a head game on the entire group. It changes the entire dynamic. The women feel, begin to feel like it's them who must impress the men, so they become less picky. The men notice that the women are trying harder, so they become more picky. That one little twist will give everyone a better result. Now, it won't come without some complaining. The women will moan and complain that the normal routine has been reversed. While the men largely don't care about the rule change, they just notice the improved results. And this is not limited to speed dating. Anytime you can modify an event to place the women in the position of making the effort, you will get a more balanced result. Most Americans will have heard of a Sadie Hawkins dance. That's usually a school dance where the girls ask out the boys to the dance. It's another example of putting the burden of proof on the women. Some matchmakers whose clients are high-income men will hold mixers where the men are outnumbered by a factor of three to one or maybe even five to one, forcing the women to compete for the attention of the men in hopes of being asked out on a date by that man sometime later. It, may, it might take more imagination to come up with a way to put some burden of effort on the women at, say, a board game night or a dinner for six type of event, but don't confuse admission price with differences in effort. Price difference should be used to equalize the attendance between men and women, but effort is shifted to the women to balance out indications of dating interest. Thanks for watching this matchmaking tips video. If this is the first video you've seen from the Professional Matchmakers School, welcome! Matchmaking is a great career for extroverts who are people-oriented. Because like sales, matchmaking is a people business. But unlike any sales job, matchmaking is always a fun conversation starter and it's a universally understood need that you can fill. We teach you both the matchmaking and the marketing. You bring your enthusiasm for your community. You only pay for your training, there are no franchise fees, no extra certification fees, no surprises of any kind. You can set up and run your business anywhere you want. Your courses are self-paced, so you can go through them at your own schedule. There are they are coordinated online, but there's also some offline reading as well. Be sure and sign up today for a free trial. There's no cost, no obligation. We don't even ask for payment information for a free trial. Just sign up and enjoy. See you in class.